Father, we thank you for this Sunday. Um, and we thank you that we get to gather and see each other um, in person. Lord, I just pray that um, you'll be with us this morning. We welcome you in this space, God. We thank you that you are with us and that you meet with us. Um, we fix our eyes on you, God. Amen. Let's stand for worship. darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring and when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you And we love you, and we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. And we love you, and we can't get enough. And all this is for you, Jesus. When you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise, cause there is resurrection life in all you do. And we love you, and we'll never stop, we can't live without you, Jesus. God, all we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you, and we want you. And come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you, and we want you. And come and consume, God, all we are. We give in our hearts are yours we want you oh we want you and come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you and we want you Jesus, 
And we love you. We can't get enough. And all this is for you, Jesus. And when you walk into the room, everything changes, and darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you.
Lord, I want to yearn for you. I want to burn with passion over you. And only you, Lord, I want to yearn. And I, I'm desperate for you. For the unclean, the unholy, and for the broken, and the unworthy, you came. And Jesus, you came for the wounded, and for the hurting, and for the lost. For the lonely you came, and Jesus you came, and oh come all ye faithful, bow before our Savior, come let us adore the one who came for us, and glory
And I love you, Lord, and all your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. For the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God and I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now and I give you everything. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your
so, so blind With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God mm. Yes, God, we thank you um, for how good you've been to us, for how um, good you've been to this ministry um, this past year, God, even when it didn't seem like it, even when it didn't feel like it. Um, God, we thank you for um, your faithfulness. We thank you that um, you've given our ministry new life. We thank you that you have um, not abandoned us or forsaken us, God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, good morning. All right. Is this, can everyone hear me okay? We're, wow, that was the most enthusiastic response um, ever. Well, I think we're going to change uh, our format just a little bit. I know typically uh, before I used to do announcements and then we go straight into the word, but uh, we're going to do announcements at the end of service. So for those of you on Zoom, uh, please hang tight after the message is over. Uh, but before we begin, you know, last week, we did that really awkward thing of just walking across the room and saying hi. So can we do that just one more time today? So just walk across the room, say hi to one another, introduce yourself if you don't know whoever that person is. But uh, let's, let's just do that for one minute, because I think we need a little bit of time. So we can get some background music too, just to make it less awkward. I can sing. I don't think anyone wants that though. Okay. I don't think wow, we're pretty short on space.
All right, you can slowly go back to your seats. Slowly. No rush. Ha ha, indeed. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Don't what? I did. I just bought new tires. Eight hundred dollars. So expensive. That would be terrible. All righty. I hope that was a fruitful more than one minute discussion or hang out with your friends. All right. Okay. All right. Well, again, uh, welcome. Uh, if you if this is your first time here at our ministry, I'd like to personally say uh, thanks for checking us out and whatnot. Uh, we're, I'm really glad that you guys are here. For those that are not visitors, for those that are old comers, well, welcome back, I guess. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, but anywho, uh, you know, before we begin, uh, let me just pray for us. Open us up in prayer. If you can bow your heads with me. Father, Lord, I thank you for this time together. Lord, it's always great to be able to meet in person and to see familiar faces and to connect again. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with us in the midst of the message today. Uh, Lord, would you open up our eyes and our hearts and our ears? Um, and would you help us be sensitive to your word today? So God, we thank you. And we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Alrighty, so uh, for I think all of us are somewhat aware that we have been going through this series on the book of James for the past couple of weeks. And today we're going to be finishing up James chapter 2. And so if you have your Bibles, please turn to James chapter 2 verse 14. Okay, And I will be reading this from the ESV version. But if you have it, again, James chapter 2 verse 14. I don't know. Is it going to be on the screen? Do we know? No, it's not going to be on the screen. Okay. Oh, it's going to be on the Zoom screen. Sorry. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our projector is dead. Oops. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so again, James chapter 2, verses 14. Um, we're going to start from there. But just, just have your place there. We're not going to read ahead yet. Um, I, just like, I just like it when people open up and have that ready. But, um, you know, I, I know that all of us, we come from different backgrounds. And I think that's sort of an obvious statement, right? Uh, some of us have grown up in the church. Some of us have uh, maybe not grown up in the church. Some of us, uh, this maybe church is a very new environment for us. And we all have different sort of journeys and places that we come from. Now, the one commonality that I've noticed, whether you're at a small church or a big church, Korean church or white church or Hispanic church, no matter what sort of ministry you go to, one of the things that you'll often hear about is faith. One of the things that we'll often talk about or teach on is faith, right? What does it mean? What is faith? How do we understand it? But, you know, the crazy thing is, one of the most common questions, even more than faith, is this. How do we have more faith? How many times, just think about your present experience in church. How many times have you guys heard over and over again, you just need more faith? How many times have we heard a leader or a, a pastor or a deacon or elder, whomever, or even in a sermon, how many times have you guys heard this phrase, you just need more faith? Now, I hate this question because this question does not really make any sense. And I think because of the complexity of this question, it naturally begs something else. From the question of how do we have more faith, the question that we really should be asking is, what does it mean to have more faith? Right? What does that mean? How do we understand it? How do we quantify it? How do we qualify it? What does it really mean to have more faith? Because too often people will tell you, Oh, you just need greater faith. Too often people will tell you, you just need to have more faith. If you want something to happen, you just need to do more of this, more of that. But is that truly what we need? Is that truly a message that's centered on the gospel message? And, you know, to be honest with you, I think that when people say you just need to have more faith, I think they're missing the main picture of what Christianity has to offer. I think when people tell you, that you just need to pray more, or you need to read the Bible more, or you, you need to uh, spend more time with God. You know, I think when people say that, they're really missing something crucial. And this is what's going to be addressed in the book of James. And I want to clarify, too, that uh, these phrases, right, these sayings about you need to pray more or you need to spend more time with God, these are all really good and important things. 
But I share this with us. I sort of want to preface uh, this by reminding us that maybe some of us are already doing these things. And for those of us that feel stuck or frustrated, you can't help but wonder, I'm already doing these things. So what more do I need to do? Am I not a good Christian? Am I not doing things right? There's so many questions that come up from this, uh, this idea of having greater faith. And again, we're going to look at the book of James to understand the nuance. Right, to understand deeply what that question means. So again, let's turn to our Bibles really quick. James chapter 2. Uh, I'm just going to read this for us really quick. Right? Uh, we're going to look at verse 14 all the way to verse 26. So please follow along. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of, you, uh, one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Amen. Now, uh, the reason why I read this, uh, this part of scripture first is because I wanted, to, I wanted us to read it. I wanted us to hear it so that we can understand the main point of this part of the passage. The main thing, if there's one thing that you guys should take away from this message today is this, that to deepen the quality of your faith in God, we must learn to produce good works. Once again, to deepen the quality of your faith in God, we must learn to produce good works. And the word quality comes up today because it isn't about the quantity of your faith. It isn't about how much faith you have in any given situation. It's about the depth of your faith. What, what Christianity is all about is the quality of your faith. And that is typically measured through depth. You know, we, uh, the word works came up. And a lot of times people would mistake this sort of message as a works-based message. You have to work to earn God's salvation. You have to work to do this. You have to work to do that. But I want us to understand that today is not about works. It's not about you trying to prove to God that you deserve this salvation, but rather we're going to understand what works really means in a Christian context. Because what works is, it's us spending time with God. Works is us spending time praying. Works is us spending time reading the word. Works is us spending time with our family and our loved ones, people that we care immensely about. Works is about you being a blessing to other people. That is the, the main part of works. That is the main theme of works. And so with that being said, let's go to our first point for today. That faith needs to be accompanied by works. Once again, faith needs to be accompanied by works. Now, what does this mean? Right? This means that in life, all of us, or whether we're Christian or non-Christian, every person has faith. Now, a lot of times you'll hear people define faith as believing in something that doesn't make sense or believing in something that maybe there's not too much evidence about. But people that typically define faith in that way, they are incorrect. They are wrong. Because what faith truly is, is us believing in something because of the evidence, because of, the, uh, because of what's available to us. You know, for example, if I ask you guys, or if, if you guys have to go through surgery, uh, uh, you, let's just say you need to have a, some sort of transplant, then are you going to just go to any doctor? Probably not. The reality is you're going to search for a doctor that has the best reputation. You're going to search for a doctor that you know has a high success rate. You know that is skilled. You know that is experienced. Most likely you're going to search out for this type of doctor to do your surgery. Now, how does faith come in here? 
faith comes into this place because what you're doing is you're putting your trust in that doctor because of the reputation, because of the evidence that you have. You have to put your faith in this doctor knowing full well that he is going to take care of you. So these are some basic principles of faith. But a lot of times the world will tell you, no, no, faith is just you believing in things without evidence. But no, that's false. That's true. You talk to any theologian, you talk to any pastor, you talk to any philosopher, and they'll tell you that faith is so much more than that. And people that typically have a poor understanding of faith, it's because what they're really doing is they're shutting something out. They're building up a wall because they don't want to interact with what faith truly entails. All people, whether, whether you're Christian or not, all people, the one commonality that we have is that we struggle in life. All people, we sin. All people, we, we question things. We doubt. We seek answers. This is just what it means to be humans. This is a normal thing. And when we experience these sort of struggles in our lives, when we experience these sort of hardships, the number one thing that we need to remember is that, yes, we have faith. Now, some of us might say, maybe my faith isn't as great as the pastor's. Or maybe my faith isn't as great as the leaders. Or maybe my faith isn't as great as, as the staff members. But that doesn't matter, right? We're not trying to, uh, in this ministry, we're not trying to make it so that you guys have my faith. We're not trying to make it or orient our ministry so that you believe everything that I believe. We're not trying to change this ministry in such a way where you believe in my God. Right. And I'm not I'm not saying this in sort of a heretical way. What I'm saying is we all worship the same God. But what we should avoid doing is telling ourselves, oh, I'm going to worship the God, uh, the God that the, the same way that pastor worships. Right? I'm going to honor God the same way that a pastor honors God. We all have our own unique faith, but it's all centered on the truth of the gospel message. So, brothers and sisters, what I want to encourage us with is that when we when we say that we have faith, when we say that we need works, when we say that we have to do these things for Christianity or for God or whomever, we have a personal relationship with God. You are not living your relationship with God through me, right? Because you don't have to go through a pastor to get to God. That's Old Testament stuff. But we have a direct connection to God. Why? Because of Jesus, because of the gospel message. You know, what's really important about understanding this nuance of faith and works Faith is always accompanied by works, right? This is just a, a normal part of us living out our faith. And what we need to understand is this, that we might not have much to offer in our context, right? We might want to, to go out and change the world. We might want to go out and, and uh, you know, start building hospitals in foreign countries. We might want to donate much money to, to uh, I guess, a starving group of people, to, to people that are hurting, that we have all these desires and we might not be able to do these things, but not being able to do these things doesn't mean you have faith. What, need, what we need to look at is our personal context. Instead of trying to donate millions of dollars to charitable organizations or Christian organizations, are we reaching out to a person in our midst? Are we caring for people within our circle? Are we caring for people that, that we know is hurting and struggling, even within our friend group? To, uh, to live out faith and works means to care for those people within our friend group or our family groups, at church, at school, wherever. That is the importance of being able to take action. Because one thing that we all strive to seek, one thing that we all strive to grow in is having substance. We all know what it's like to hear people talk and they have nothing but hot air. We all know what it's like to hear people act like they know everything but the minute you have a, a genuine conversation with them, you recognize that it falls apart. You recognize that there's really not much behind it. And what do we do when we encounter those people? It's hard to accept the things that they say. But this, by doing faith and works, by caring for one another, by remembering that because we have faith, we can do works, this is how we deepen our faith. It's not about giving the next person 100 bucks to help them in their, in their life. It's not about buying uh, someone Brazilian barbecue or taking them out to Ruth's Chris or doing something really extravagant. What faith and works is all about is how you use your time to be a blessing to one another. This leads me to our second point, that faith and works, both of these things are a demonstration of our faith. It's a demonstration of your salvation. 
Now, I love verse 19 in particular. I'm just going to read this verse really quick. It says, you believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Now, for those of us that aren't too familiar with the nuances of, of uh, Old Testament and New Testament writing, this verse is actually sarcasm, right? And maybe that's why I love James so much, because I'm a very sarcastic person. But really, what this verse means is in the church, there was someone that was opposing James. There was someone that was telling James, oh, okay, you have faith, I have works or whatever, and then let's just see what happens. But James is saying, hey, so you believe that God is one? Okay, great. So does everybody else. So do demons believe. He's being extremely condescending. And I love it. I love that he's being so mean to, to, to that guy. But the reason why he's being so mean is because that person that's pushing for just one thing is missing the point. The person that's saying, oh, it should just be one thing. He's completely missing the point of, of faith and works. The reason why we talk about this so much, the reason why we encourage it is because this is how we know that we have salvation. This is how we know that we have a relationship with God because it's because of your faith you are spurned to take action. It's because of your faith that you're, you're um, motivated to do things, not to earn a salvation, but to be a blessing to others. And I wanna point us really quick towards two people in, in the Bible. Right, James, first off, he refers to Abraham. Right, Abraham is known as the father of faith, very famous guy. But uh, he points to Abraham because Abraham acted in faith. He had works, he had faith, he had both and. He specifically, in James, he specifically refers to the story where Isaac was taken up and he was about to be sacrificed. Right, it's a really gruesome story and it's a really weird story because if I was Abraham, I'd be like, God, I'm not gonna sacrifice my son. You're clearly mad. Right, I'm not gonna do this, you're crazy. But what uh, Abraham demonstrated is how he took action because of his faith. And because of that, he was rewarded. Because of that, God changed his mind. Because of that, God spared his son, Isaac. We also look at the story of Rahab. Rahab was this very famous woman who lived in the city of Jericho. And uh, before, when the Israelites were trying to invade and take over Jericho, because that was the promised land, there were two spies that went to scout the city. And what Rahab did, even though she was a prostitute, even though she was the lowest of lows, what she did was to take those people in, those two spies, and, and instead, of, uh, instead of pretty much uh, exposing them to the, to the authorities, what she did was she hid them and showed them a safer exit so that they can go back to their, uh, their people. Rahab, someone that was an outcast, someone that was filled with sin, someone who probably thought she was the worst of the worst, she had faith, and because of that, she took action. There, these are two people that James brings up, two people where we see both faith and works. Even though a lot of us feel that maybe our faith isn't up there, even though a lot of us feel that maybe we need to grow a little bit more on our faith, the reality is just like Abraham and Rahab and many other people in the Bible, we are able to still have that same level of faith. We are able to still do works, take action because of our faith. That is available to all people, not just me, not just our staff members, not just pastors, but to all people. What we need to understand is that when we struggle in our faith, it doesn't mean you don't have enough faith. I hate when people say that. I hate when you're going to people and, and you're asking them for help and they just tell you to pray about it. That's wrong, right? I mean, yes, we should be praying about it, but also we should be physically present with that person. We need to follow Jesus' example and come alongside this person to be with them, to support them, to be a blessing to them. And this is what it says in, again, in verse um, uh, 15, or I'm sorry, verse 16. And one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? If you're coming to me for a problem and I tell you, just go pray about it. What good is that? How am I being a blessing to you? While yes, we should be praying. While yes, we should be doing these things. You and I are having a conversation. I am there to support you. I am there to be a blessing to you. Maybe I should be there to pray with you. And brothers and sisters, what we need to understand about this second point, about faith and works being a demonstration of your salvation, what we need to get is that no matter what, we will always struggle. But despite the struggle, we, we persist. 
We persist in our faith. We persist in our works. They cooperate together. Why? Because it's helping us draw closer and closer to God. All of us want to do great and amazing things for the Lord. All of us want to be able to have faith that moves the mountains. Where all of us want to, uh, we all want these great things in our lives. And don't get me wrong, these are great aspirations. These are things that we should shoot for. But instead of letting urgency dictate when that should happen, instead of letting um, yourself rush that process, be there with God. Let him guide you along that process. Let him reveal to you what it means to have deeper and great, greater faith. The last point I have for us today is this. We are justified or made righteous, meaning that we are, we're put in uh, right standing with God. Right? That's what justification and righteousness means. So we are justified and made righteous because faith and works is obedience. Once again, we are justified or made righteous because faith and works is obedience, right? And it's not obedience to the world, but it's obedience to God. Now, all of us, we should desire to do right by God. I think that's sort of a given. And we, again, we looked at Abraham and Rahab's story. We looked at the things that they did. We looked at uh, how they had faith and works. But looking beyond just Abraham, Abraham and Rahab, what we need to constantly remind ourselves is that work and faith are not separated. They are, not, they are compatible. They're not incompatible, but they are compatible. The reason why I say it's obedience is because more often than not, God will tug slightly in your heart or possibly in your mind. God will drag, or not even drag, he'll tug at you and say, hey, you know, there's something going on here. Let's explore it together. God might tell you, hey, I noticed that you're angry. Why don't we talk about that? God might say, hey, I noticed that you, you're trying to sin or maybe you've already sinned. You know, it's okay. Let's talk about that. Every time we choose to hear God's voice, every time we choose to move based on that little tugging in your heart, that is obedience. That is a demonstration of you living out faith and works. All right? Too often we think about the big picture. Too often we think about make, doing grand gestures, but brothers and sisters, let's forget about that for a second. In that small place, in that quiet place, in those moments where everything is unseen, in those moments where nobody is around, when God is tugging at you, can you just give him a couple of seconds just to respond to that? When God is tugging at you and saying, hey, you know, I, I want to talk about this small thing here. Can you provide a space to God as brief as it may be to allow him to do that? A lot of us are, uh, you know, we want to understand our calling. We want to know our futures. We want to know how, uh, what, where our life is headed towards. And that's all great things. But as we seek and desire those things, God is constantly there with you. He's constantly moving in you. And as you think about your future or your desires, will you let God tug you just a little bit? Will you let God speak to you just a little bit in those moments? Because every time you choose to turn, around, turn away from sin or anything else, every time you choose to hear God first, you are obeying. Every time you choose to look towards God first, you are living out faith and works. And brothers and sisters, this is why it's so important for us to truly understand. It's not about the number of faith that we have. It's not about the quantity of our faith, but it's always about quality. It's always about the depths of your faith. You know, way too many people, and way too many people focus on, on things that are so unnecessary. Way too many people focus on trying to have this vast faith. Way too many people try to compare their faith to someone else. But I ask us today to journey alongside each other, to take small steps, to stop ourselves from comparing our lives to one another, but instead to celebrate one another. If someone is doing really well because of their faith, then great, say, bless you. Then celebrate with them. Don't compare your faith and say, man, I wish I had what they had. We all have what they have. We all have faith. But instead of telling ourselves, man, I just wish I was better, let's pause for a moment, look at their situation, rejoice with them, and then tell ourselves, you know what, I'm going to start obeying God a little bit. I'm going to start listening to his voice just a little bit more. Tell ourselves that, man, it's okay that, that my faith is at a different level than this other person's faith. Tell yourself that. Remind yourself that it's okay that you're still growing because we are all humans. 
you know, I'm almost 30 something, I think. I, I always forget my age, right? I'm pretty up there, not that up there. But you know, the reality is that even though I'm probably 10 years older than uh, most of you guys here, the, I'm still figuring things out. It's hard for me to say my faith is perfected. It's hard for me to say that I have great faith. It's hard for me to say that my faith is like uh, spotless. I struggle just like you guys too. I struggle with my faith every single day because there are pastors that I look at and I'm like, wow, this person looks like he has great faith. Wow, this pastor looks like he's doing even greater than I am. And let me tell you, let me be honest with you. It is a daily struggle. There are times where I just want to abandon the faith because it gets too hard. There are times where I just want to shove it under a rug and pretend that it doesn't exist. But every time I have those thoughts, God tugs in me. He tugs in my heart. He tugs in my mind. And he tells me, you know better. He tells me that I have done things in such a way that you can be blessed. I have done things in such a way where you know the truth that I am with you, that I am there to support you. I am there to lift you up when you cannot lift yourself up. This is the main message of the gospel. God is here for us. God is here to support us. God is here to tell us the truth. And brothers and sisters, I want to remind us once again that it isn't about the quantity of your faith. It isn't about having a large amount of faith. It's about growing deep in your faith. Instead of looking at how wide it can be, look at the depth. Instead of looking at how you need more faith in every situation, look at how you have this faith in your life. Look at how this, this faith that you have, this thing that you might cherish, this thing that you don't know, this thing that you struggle with, look at how deep and deep and deep it goes in your hearts, in your minds, and in your souls. We all need to learn more and more what it means to have faith. But this is a lifelong journey. We, we're, I'm, there's no expectation for you to understand everything perfectly now. Right? I, I tell you, even theologians and philosophers and scholars, all these great people that know the Bible better than all of us combined, even they will tell you that they are still figuring this out. So instead of putting pressure on yourself to be perfect, instead of putting pressure on yourself to understand everything in such a way where you're like this great theologian, instead of doing that, let us journey together to take small steps forward in our faith. Let us journey together to take one small step forward to grow in our faith. Not in such a way where we look 10 years down the line and expect to have this perfect faith, but to take it one day or one step at a time. To grow in such small ways that are going to build up and be a blessing to you now and in the future. Once again, I'd like to remind us the main point. To deepen the quality of your faith in God, we must learn to produce good works. And by works, we are once again talking about spending time with the Lord. We are once again talking about reading, praying, um, uh, being a blessing to others. We're talking about caring for one another. These are the main things that we are talking about when we say works. Because it's not about proving your salvation. It's not about proving that you have this great faith. But it's about demonstrating that in your life, in large ways and in small ways. So let's pray. Father, Lord, um, we learn through your example of what it means to have faith. We learn from your example of what it means to be a blessing to others, what it means to spend time with you, God, what it means to grow in your presence. And Lord, all of us, we all struggle in such different ways. For some of us, this message hits home. For others, this message might feel redundant. But regardless of where we stand with this message today, Lord, I pray that you would remind us and you would help us see that faith is doable because of you. That we have the capabilities to grow and deepen our faith because you have provided a way for that. So Lord, I pray that you would help, help us put our confidence and our trust in you. Help us remember that faith is not about believing in something blindly, but faith is about believing in you because of the evidence that we see, because of the things that we have, because of what we know to be true. So Lord, would you help us all deepen our faith today? God, I thank you, and I pray all these things in your son's name. Amen.
we're gonna go into a time of offering and response. you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All right, let's bow our heads to close our service. Father, Lord, um, as we reflect upon your message today, Lord, I pray that all students here would be encouraged, knowing that there is a possibility, knowing that there is a future in you, God. And Lord, for anyone who's truly struggling here today, Lord, I ask that you'd give them hope, you give them encouragement, that their faith may be placed in you, and that they will be rewarded for doing so. That their faith will not be misplaced because, Lord, you are perfect, you are constant, and you are good. So I pray for these students as they finish up their finals, as they turn in papers or, or finish their tests, that they would do so strongly, that they would do so knowing, knowing that there is rest for them at the end of everything. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sarah has announcements. Oh. Yes, we have many announcements. Um, first of all, 
Um, for our upcoming events, this Friday, we're having our Friday night fellowship. It's going to be a bowling night. So, yeah, we're going to meet at church at 6 p.m. to carpool. And then location is TBD. Pastor James is going to call around and figure out the best spot. But, yeah, meet at church at 6 p.m. And then we're going to go bowling. That's Friday. And then next Sunday, we're having another joint service with KM. So that's going to be in the other room across like the playground on top where we were last week. So it's going to be there. Um, and then the Friday after that, May 28th, I think, um, we're having a joint KMEM uh, Friday night fellowship. It's going to be an Argentinian barbecue and board game night. So come through the next two Fridays. Um, they're going to be at church um, for the for this Friday, it's at 6 p.m. For next Friday, it's at 6.30 p.m. So keep that in mind. Um, our last couple of announcements. Um, one is for graduating seniors. If you're graduating or graduated this month or next month, um, fill out the graduation form. It's on our Facebook page, and we'll also post it on our website later. And our last announcement is we're having elections for our next PC. Uh, for our next president and vice president. So um, nominations are open today and they're gonna be open until Wednesday. So if you wanna nominate someone, do it now. The link is on the Facebook page already and it's gonna be posted on the website later today. So please nominate people who you think would be um, a good president or vice president. They have to be an active member of um, EM or KM for at least one year and be a rising junior or senior. Um, so once we get in all those nominations by Wednesday, John and I will be reaching out to the nominees to see if they want to accept the nomination. And we're going to have elections next Sunday. So it's moving pretty fast. So yeah, nominate people. Think about serving. Yes. 